Let me take you into the realm of pure consciousness, often referred to as the Mingzhi state. My guest today, Regina Del Oro, explains the steps to get there and how to apply the Mingzhi state in your daily life. My name is Torsten Lüdecke and this is the Wisdom Qigong Podcast. Thank you again for inviting me. And this is a very um, wonderful opportunity to, to talk about something that's very um, near and dear to my heart and that I've been practicing already for a number of years. Um, so Ming Zhui is, uh, is pure consciousness, right? The word Ming Zhui means clear or pure consciousness. And once you say Ming Zhui, a lot of people are, you know, wondering what we're talking about, right? And then you say pure consciousness, they're wondering what we're talking about twice, because not just the word in Chinese, but the English word does not really convey, you know, we immediately think it is a practice for a select few that have the ability to have the time and the concentration and the high gong fu to go to this experience but actually it's something not just very accessible for everybody but it's very applicable in a very practical way so um ming Zhe for dummies let's say we have four practical steps to get into this uh, pure consciousness state. Um, Teacher Wei has talked about the four steps to get into it. Um, so the first one is relaxation. And that's really accessible to all of us. It's actually very important. So it's really the basic foundation of our entire practice, if you think about it, because when you relax, you let go of whatever it is that you're holding on to. If you're holding on to, you know, a contraction, something that makes you contract, uh, like pain, for example, when you feel pain, uh, you're, the pain itself brings you to a state of contraction. But what you do is if you relax, if you let go of that contraction, you feel pain less. But not only is it something very useful for when we have a situation of like pain, it's also very useful to enter into uh, deeper states of consciousness. It's actually the gateway to uh, a deeper concentration, to a deeper state of consciousness. So the first thing to do for all of us is to just breathe and relax. So if you have a hard time relaxing, begin by relaxing every part of your body, noticing your head, just relax. And then go through every part of your body and just relax, give yourself time to go into a state of relaxation. So that's the first step. Um, the second step is observation. Right? So observation is the magic word that will bring us into the state of Ming Zhui. Um, so by observation, we just mean that we close our eyes and we bring our attention to first our body, right? If we go and relax our, our brain, our head, space, and everything that's in the head, then our observation follows. So once we relax, we observe. And by observing, we notice what's going on in that space. 
something very interesting begins to happen when you practice observation. And that is that you give yourself space between whatever it is that you're observing and the act of observation. So by, by giving yourself that little bit of space, that little bit of time between uh, your own state and the observation, the state that you're in changes. So let's say that you are suddenly afraid or that you're suddenly angry, right? Let's say you're driving on the street and somebody cuts you off. So the fir it's fear and anger immediately, right? So if you take a deep breath, relax, and just observe, you notice, first of all, that you're safe. Secondly, you notice your own reaction. You observe your reaction, you observe your body and what is happening. And suddenly you're in control. Whereas you're not in control when you are in the middle of an emotional reaction. Suddenly, by applying the, the technique of just observing, you're in a state of calm and you're in a state of control. So observation is the second step to entering now, into a deeper state of being right? yeah now let let me ask uh, uh, some cl clarifying questions here because i think the whole relaxation is uh, for everybody's easy to understand uh yeah some people might still find it difficult to get into a state of complete relaxation but this is a question of practice i, th I don't think there's much you know one could uh, one could be unsure about now, when we talk about observation, I think there's an important uh, uh, thing to be aware of. Um, and that is uh, observation implies no judgment, if, if, if that is correct to say. Uh, because that is uh, something that usually our mind would do uh, immediately. Now, in your example of the driving and somebody cuts you off, uh, I'm sure there's a judgment in your mind about that other driver it's not just you being scared or angry it is there's a judgment involved and when there's a, a, a judgment there is no no um no observation possible then the observation is um uh clouded so uh, i think this is something to be aware of that observation implies no judgment so when we practice observation, at least that's my experience, and you have to correct me here because you are the expert when it comes to Mingzhi. Uh, but for me, this is an important thing to, you know, uh, to keep in mind um, and to be aware of when we practice observation that we that we that we notice if judgment kicks in because then we know we're not there. Is that is that am I talking rubbish here? Because actually, I don't want to say anything that doesn't fit into. No, you know? no, no. Actually, that's a really important point. Um, it is exactly right. So what begins to happen when you observe is the suspension of judgment means that we put our rational mind in stop for a minute. Right. So our actual thoughts, you know, what we use in everyday life because it's necessary, the framework that we have to put everything together and to navigate the day, the daylight mode of being is put on hold for a second so for a second it really doesn't matter whether uh, the other driver was in the right or in the wrong whether the other driver put everybody in jeopardy and really there's nothing matters about your reaction at that moment you go behind the rational mind and you simply look it just take you're just looking. Uh, let's say, for example, that uh, this is a very important question and an important skill. Um, let's say, for example, that you have 
you're, you have an apple in front of you, right? An object, any object. Let's imagine an apple just for the sake of whatever, right? You see an apple and you have many ways of being in front of the apple, right? One of them is if you're hungry, you probably want to take a bite of the apple, right? Another one is to use your judgment, right? What does it look like? What shape is it? How big is it? How much is it, right? Is it ripe? Is it ready to be eaten or not? And all of these are the ways in which we approach every single thing that we encounter. Every single thing goes through our rational mind and we make judgments about it. But when you observe the apple, let's say you're an artist, and you just want to capture what you're looking at, then you put aside all of the judgments about the size, the shape, the color, um, everything that we know about the apple, and just look at it. You just look at it in order to capture it in a painting or in a photograph or whatever. So if you go into that kind of an exercise of just observing, noticing what we do in everyday life, and then taking a step back and just observe, you get a little bit closer to the state of Ming Zhui. Because what you pointed out is very important. I think that's a, I think it's a great example. When you talk about the apple, I totally get what you're saying. If I put myself in the in the uh, in the shoes of an artist who wants to paint it, I will not look at the apple and thinking, you know, what uh, you know, uh, class is it, or uh, I want to bite into it. I will really observe the apple in order to capture it fully and then to project it onto my uh onto my drawing or painting or something like that so i think this is a this is a, this makes it very clear for me what observation really means so that, that's uh, perfect so i think that was step two now we are having four steps so maybe we should take it to the third step so this third step is just going deeper into the first two steps so it's called concentration and this step makes people go crazy. I know this is the one that really used to make me think, oh, I'll never be able to do this. Concentration, then I have so many thoughts, I'll never be able to concentrate. It just means that you relax more and that you go deeper into observation is all it means. So when you notice that you can come to the state of observation, just relax more, relax more and notice, go deeper into the observation mode and just notice deeper. It's just, um, it sounds very easy and it actually is much easier than we think uh, because the the first thought is, I have so many distracting thoughts. What can I do about that? I will never be able to do this because my mind is too, it's too loud. My thoughts are too loud. But actually, it's something that we can all do. And we actually, we don't need to go to the mountaintop and, you know, get away from the everyday world to go into it. All we have to do is relax more. And so if we go back to the example of the apple, if you're, if you're an artist um, or you're a photographer or a painter, then getting into the state and noticing it deeper gets you into more detail of where is the light, you know, noticing the light, noticing the shades of color and noticing the solidity of it and how to convey that. It's pretty much the same thing uh, when we talk about concentration. So um, let's say that, for example, you apply the, the example of the apple to yourself and you go into 
observing your own body. Uh, you go into, let's say, you begin to observe um, the, the, the head space. And you begin to just relax and feel the relaxation, for example, in, in the area of the brains. And you begin to observe the area of the brain. Then you relax more. And you begin to really imagine and visualize in greater detail, every aspect of the brain, the color, the shape, and all of your all of your mind is there. That's what we mean by concentration. Shh. We have a secret that not many people know about. So over the past year, we've worked on an e-learning course. Um, and it's taken a lot of time lots of resources, lots of producing things nobody has ever seen. And we'll finally launch it in the first week of October. If you are interested in learning Shineng Qigong on a more fundamental level, this is perfect for you. And it's a secret because depending on when you see this video or this little snippet, you can get 50% off on our e-learning course. Oh, it's called the La Chi Method as the essence of Shining Qigong. And to quote myself, when you're done with this course, you'll perceive La Chi everywhere. And that's a fact. Um, if you're interested, check the description and yes, let us know. Quite frankly, I, I'm not sure um, whether there might also be an issue with our language in, in the Western world. Because, you know, we know this is a concept developed in Chinese and a concentration in, in many cultures has, has very different um, um, angles to it. And many people associate actually tension with concentration because it's like a, applying force to something it doesn't it doesn't a hundred percent i think the word concentration doesn't necessarily 100 percent reflect what you describe so i think this could be the reason why many people struggle with this concept maybe uh, the word as such concentration isn't a isn't totally ideal for what's actually going on because what you describe is more giving something full attention um right when you when you when you when you get the observation and basically what you say then and then you just expand on this observation uh, observation you give the full attention uh you, you you go deeper but it's not it's at least that's how i understand it it's not an effort of uh it's not an effort of strength of um of uh forcing yourself something because that is the opposite of relaxation so that can't it can't be that but i think the word concentration for many people like if i remember when i went to school and to concentrate it it means i was sitting there like in, <laughs> like this and trying so hard to so it is but that's the opposite of what we actually want so i think one of the problems why people struggle with it it could be the language now you know maybe the the word in chinese uh, doesn't fully um uh uh, find its equivalent in the English in the English language, and that is why we, you know, why some people find this concept so difficult. While it's really nothing else than you know giving it all of who you are at that moment. So when you say you know, you observe your your inner headspace or something like that, uh, you're giving it all of who you are. All of who you are is in this observation. Um, this is a, a description that comes. Like, you know, this is like, yes, just you you immerse yourself fully. Now, but that doesn't mean an effort. It's just going all the way, right? It's a, um, very, a very important point. It's actually the most important point uh, so far. Uh, because I think you're right. In our Western culture, everything, well, in the West, we're highly, um, the history of the West um, has uh, develop the concept of rationality to the highest level, right? Um, I'm sure it's not exclusive to the West. I'm just talking to what I know. Um, so every time we use words immediately, our rationality picks it up. And so um, 
the word concentration, I think, first of all, the distinction that you made between effort and effortless is absolutely crucial because this exercise is not an exercise in effort, but it is an eff in, it is an exercise in effortlessness. It's probably one of the reasons we struggle with it because we don't understand what that means, right? Everything is for us a matter of willpower and taking steps to achieve our goal, right? And of course, the more the willpower, the greater the possibility of achieving our goal. But we need to forget all of that right now. Yes, yes. Because it's the exact opposite. So as you said very uh, correctly, relaxation is the exact opposite of trying to. So when we say concentration, think about when they sell juices that have a concentrated, concentrated, right? So orange juice, now buy orange juice, the concentrate of orange juice. It doesn't mean that the orange juice tried harder. <laughs> it right. just means that there's more of the essence of the orange yes. juice and a smaller portion of it here. Yes. So when we say concentration, we mean more of relaxation and observation. Yes. So you relax. And I think that is, a, that, right. yes, that, that is a very important point for people to get. Um, and it's not just within the, the Ming Yu state. I hear so often that people say, no, I'm, 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 I'm trying so hard with Qigong to get healthy and so on. And I'm really giving it all and it's just not working. And then, you know, my instinct would say, well, that is the very reason why it's not working. You're trying so hard. Right, uh, because how the essence of relax uh, of qigong is a relaxation and to get the energy back flowing, and you can't get there if you're you know if you're tense and if you're trying and forcing and that is not that is not the purpose. So I'm glad we mentioned this uh, so that people people understand what concentration actually means and don't mess it up with uh, mix it up with our Western idea of what it needs to be successful, great will, power, power, follow through, and all of these things uh, until you can hardly breathe anymore. Uh, that is the opposite of what we are talking about these days, exactly. right? Exactly. So okay. when you your concentration, just think of the orange juice, more of the Good. essence of Good. relaxation and observation. Your observation just becomes sharper and sharper, but not because you want it to, not because you're forcing it, but because you're actually relaxing more. So if in Zen and Qigong you're got it, getting nowhere with your um, practice, just relax. Just relax and stop trying. You know, the, the magic word in, in Zen and Qigong, I think, is this effortless movement, effortless um, observation. You know, when you think about a baby, mm. you think about what we are uh, at our core before we get uh, socialized. Babies just observe because they kind of have to, right? They ha kind of have to figure out how the world works. And they just observe. They observe the parents, they observe the sound, the facial reactions, yes. but everything is done in this state of just looking. So if we could get back to that state, you know, we we could get into this magical Ming Zhuo state. Um, and so oh. this brings us to the last step, which is really... Yes. Uh, not really a step at all, but it's kind of the result of uh, what we've done in the what we've done, and that is transformation. So when you just relax and observe and observe deeper, you will notice that things begin to shift on their own. 
you know? So for healing, for example, let's say that you have an ulcer because you tend to be a person that's very tense. So we invite you to just relax, go to the space of your stomach that feels painful, just observe it and just go deeper in your relaxation, go deeper in your observation. And very soon you begin to notice how that space that's contracted begins to relax more. And actually what? It begins to change. It begins to transform. That space begins to flow. Uh, so, um, this practice is a very important practice. It's actually a really delicious practice. You know, I think it's the place we want to go to before we start our day. Because if you practice this at the very beginning of the day, you allow yourself a moment to just come to the state of not trying you know, not struggling, but just being with yourself, just observing yourself, just being. And then you can face your day in a very, you know, comfortable, peaceful state. And it's much more difficult to get trapped into these little games that we play during the day that really get us to spend our energy in silly ways. We can use our energy no. in a much more effective way if we practice uh, these four little steps or this very esoteric Ming Zhu state uh, is really very accessible and it has really practical applications. So um, I would like I would like to uh, to just uh, add one more question because I'm sure that's going to be on many people's minds, and um, and that is a question because you know fundamentally, the what we're talking about is observation. You know, the relaxation is really just a state to get us into a possibility to be able to observe, and then we deepen this observation, which you call concentration, and then the transformation happens. Now, the question that many people will have is. How comes observation leads to transformation? Now, is that something you know you could explore a little? Because you know that we would like to know how comes. Right. Okay. So this is a very good question. It it sounds really puzzling, right? How can observation lead to transformation? Well, uh, if you begin to let go of the rational mind. This is kind of goes back to what we were talking about before, right? The word concentration evokes, you know, so many things in our rational mind. Mm -hmm. What begins to happen is that the mind is ex the rational mind, the tool that we use during the day to go about our business. Uh, navigating the daylight reality is very powerful. Um, but many of those things are just tools, right? The rational mind creates tools and then forgets that they are just tools. And then we get trapped in the tool itself. And this begins to create all kinds of states that develop into stress into tension, which then develops into blockages and perhaps even dis-ease. The word dis-ease means that we're not at ease, right? So observation leads to transformation because we turn dis-ease into ease, mm -hmm. into just allowing things to be. When you have ease, you also have flow. Mm -hmm. So imagine, imagine a blockage like 
imagine a river or a brook, right? When you put something in the middle, it blocks the flow. But if you lift it, you allow the flow to just happen. Hmm. And once the flow happens, you know, you, you have actually essentially created transformation. Hmm. So the same in, in your body. If there is dis-ease, all we need to do is lift the blockage and turn it back into ease. Hmm. So is it really that simple? Maybe. It I think it's be. it's it it, it 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 absolutely could be. But I'm also yeah. For me, um, I've asked this question not because I doubt that uh, observation leads to transformation. I've asked it because uh, for me, this is a fundamental uh, way of how I live my life. Because uh, no matter what I observe, it always transforms. So. Uh, for example, if I've you know if I've got a scary you know, thing ahead of me, something that I'm worried about, if I allow myself to observe that, you know the whole thing will shift by itself. So uh, any any negative emotions also for me, just by observing them, will automatically transform them. Uh, so this is an experience I've had many many times in my life, and I'm having it on a daily basis. That by but I'm asking you, you know, just because observation is so important when it comes to the, reaching the Mingzhi state. And also would like to add that we know from quantum physics, I mean, this is one of the great wonders uh, in physics these days. Uh, if you look at quantum physics, uh, we know that particles change their behavior if they once they are observed. So I don't know whether you've ever looked into quantum physics, Regina, and I don't want to put you on the hotspot for that here. But in quantum physics, uh, you know, there are incredible experiments where things change the moment they are observed. So, uh, so observation has an impact. Science and physics doesn't know, exact, know exactly how to explain it and why that is. But observation plays a crucial role in our existence, uh, also from a scientific point of view of you know, physics and quantum physics. Just wanted to throw that in for those listeners who are familiar with quantum physics. So they've got something to relate to and say, oh, yeah, that's true. Observation uh, also is so important in quantum physics. So maybe, you know, there is also a link here to what we are doing when we are, when we are uh, reaching the Mingzhi state. You know, that's very useful. I am not a scientist um, by trade. So I don't really, I'm not really aware of quantum physics, but I know kind of the just very generally um, that uh, a lot of my friends who are scientists are finding that Zen and Qigong is so compatible with uh, the latest developments in physics. Um, yes. So I, I did not know that particles change when we observe them. Uh, but from a layman's point of view, it could be that our observation is letting go of our grasping. You know, when, for example, you grasp onto something, it has a certain quality. And when you let go, you change the dynamic. So um, observation changes the dynamic with you, between you and whatever it is that you are observing. It changes it by uh, changing it changing it by not attaching to it. And the non-attachment allows things to be what they are, and they enter into balance on their own. I think there might be even a scientific um, law that says that the universe kind of enters into balance on its own. You know, so right. we don't really have to go about, think about this. Do you think about your heart? eating oh you really nope. don't not unless nope. you're really going uphill and you're suddenly oh my god <laughs> my heart is beating so fast generally you don't think about your heart beating and you don't cause your heart to beat it beats on its own mm -hmm. you don't really think about breathing all day long you just breathe naturally so your body is in a state of wanting to continue being alive on its own mm. and without too much 
messing with it, it tends to be alive and stay alive. That's how it's that it's wired for it. How it, how does it come to be different? Well, because our rational minds begin to try to mess with our body and oh look, I could be better if I did this, or it could be faster if I did that, and that's how we begin to shorten our lives and mess with the natural equilibrium. So maybe that's why particles change when they are observed because we stop messing with perfection. Mm. You know, the universe in, by itself tends to harmony and balance. So once we allow ourselves to just observe, that harmony and balance very often is just restored on its own. Now, I would like to go one step further now, because when we started, you said that the Mingji is both uh, accessible and applicable. So application, obviously, is very interesting now. So say I've followed the four steps and I've actually reached this stage. How do I apply this in daily life? Well, that's a great question. You know, it's a great question because it's really um, what will what will just open the key to to um, really transforming our lives. Uh, think about what we've just talked about: observation. Let's say that you're driving, and a driver cuts you off. This is a very common experience, and we both go into fear, anger, and judgment, right? Or the judgment comes after the reaction of fear and anger. And then you say, well, yes, of course I'm angry because this person broke the law and is making everybody uh, be in danger and creates a situation of chaos. So I'm justified in being angry at this person. What if before all of that happened, you went into the habit of observing. So every day in your everyday life, every single step of your day, you apply this rule of observation and relaxation. So when you go into this immediate mode of fear reaction and anger reaction, take a deep breath, relax, and just observe your body. Observe the fear, observe the anger. And what begins to happen is that you put it in perspective. Suddenly you realize you don't need to engage in the anger. And guess what? Suddenly you have so much more energy in your day because there is a sense in which you can choose to no longer be engaged in this anger. Think about it. Should I really spend my day being angry and thinking about this person who cut me off? Or can I just let it go? And if I let it go, I notice that all the energy that would have gone into and all the time that would have gone into being angry at this person, which is going to lead nowhere, and it really is something you will forget in five years, you won't even remember it, but yet you used up your precious energy, your precious life force into something that's absolutely unimportant. So for me, it's magic because I stopped engaging in a lot of emotion that was useless. And then you begin to choose and say, I really don't, don't want to spend my precious life and life force engaging and attaching in things that are absolutely irrelevant to my life. That's simple. And once it becomes a habit in your life, you have so much more energy, so much more joy. And, you know, if you choose to be happy and be filled with energy, 
you can do that because you can direct your life force in a different direction. Isn't that wonderful? That is wonderful. And I wonder whether we can take this even one step further because the example we are talking about now is quite mundane. It's something, as you said, it's not really important in your life. Um, you know, you will have forgotten about this incident of the driver. But for most of us, you know, we have... Uh, we have something which is important in our life. For example, that I'm getting all upset about my boss at work or, or this colleague that is just, you know, always making my life so difficult. Or, you know, the family member that I'm that I'm fighting with or the, the neighbor or a fear that I have about losing my job or, you know, a health concern. You know, all of these things, they're not mundane. They are important to my life. But still... Uh, yeah, using the Mingzhi method, I can I now have something that will put things into a completely different perspective and will give me an, um, a, a different way of handling these things without losing my power, without losing my energy, without uh, clouding my day, without taking away you know uh, the, uh, the my, my joy in life. Um, so I think we we can we should take this one step further now and say okay how does it apply in these important areas of my life where I yeah you know, initially think this is a question of life and death right literally because you know often we are over we exaggerating because we're getting emotional about it but it feels like it in this moment and this is why we put so much importance into it so how can we how can we well I don't want to say how can we because you've explained how we can do it. But I think it's important for us to know this is not just for the, the odd driver we don't know that's cut us off. It is really for, for all these things that run our daily life, that make us keep thinking over and over and over again and drain our energy and uh, create all, all these emotions that are so uncomfortable. I think these are the areas where the Minja state really adds the value Right. Uh, so this is, of course, it's an art. Uh, there are we have to face many situations in our life, some which are very mundane and some which are very um, serious, even critical. But, yes. um, you know, let's take two examples. One is the example of your family, your family members and how you engage with them. Uh, so. It's very different when you have the power of observation and you don't engage immediately, you change the dynamic instantly, right? You, you change it instantly. Um, so for example, if you're in a family like my, I, I talked about this in the other podcast we did that, you know, I looked for Qigong because I needed peace because <laughs> I had a beagle and a, a son with autism and, all males in my surrounded by men and so it was really crazy so how do you handle the beagle and the child with autism and the, the husband who's in, in, ready to go to work and your other son that's throwing a ball and playing football inside the house how do you do that um well one at a time you begin to relate to them in a different way because it's very different if somebody assaults your um, your field with an emergency, it's a very different reaction to be engaged in this um, emergency, red alert, red alert, you must react immediately or else everything will come apart. And you get sucked into that. Then your reaction will not be as efficient as it would be if you were to engage with it through observation. So if somebody comes at you with a red alert, for example, your beagle is about to eat your son's food, to take a moment, observe, and before you go into the emotional, don't do that, uh, you go into observation, there's very often very easy solutions that will prevent escalation you know so observation as opposed to escalation is you know really a very useful tool so 
is it going to solve every single problem that is, let's say that people listening to this podcast have a very serious situation at home. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, you know, there, your common sense will always come first, right? You need to take the action you need to take in order to be safe. But what we are saying is in, an, in every normal circumstance, the fact of observing will yield the same result that it did while you're in the street and being cut off. So before you go into reaction, the mode of the reactive mode that takes so much of your energy and very often will lead to making the wrong decisions because you're doing them while you're being attached to something. If you simply observe and let go of all the attachments to outcome, to everything and just simply relax and observe, very often the solution comes on its own. But there are so many times that you put, uh, you project things to another person because you're so attached. And the other person really meant nothing of what you think they meant. Right. Mm. It was only your projection. So staying quiet for a second and observing very often is very effective in preventing escalation, but also preserving your precious energy and life force. Yes. So that when you need to act, you can act in an efficient way and with the energy that you need to exert to create the change that you would like. So yes. for me, it's absolutely, again, it's absolutely a crucial tool to have as you go about your day. Because the escalation you're talking about is not just happening on the factual level, it's also happening on an emotional level and on a, you know, draining your energy level. And, uh, and, That is where uh, where most of the drama happens. Most of the drama doesn't happen in real life. Most of the drama happens within us. It's an inside job that we keep creating because we get so worked up about everything. And uh, and the Mingzhi state is a way to stop that. And we all know that at the end of the day, you said, okay, we don't know whether the Mingzhi state can resolve all of people's problems. But uh, we also you know, have to admit that we don't know what the solution to a problem actually is, because very often you know, something that we think is a huge problem or a big catastrophe in our life turns out you know, in retrospect to have been a really good thing. And it made us change something in our life that turns to the better, uh, our lives to the better. So it is very difficult you know, uh, to judge what is a resolution of a problem um, because often what we think it is, isn't it? And uh, I'm re always reminded in the situations of Master Yi and Shi, who we both adore. Uh, he uh, he always says, uh, you know, no matter what happens, it's also good. It's it's it, you know, things work out different than he expected, but it's also good. And then we just adapt to it and you know work with whatever new results there are in our lives. And we move on from there, but we don't create all the drama. And you, you've, you've mentioned a couple of times the energy we are losing, and uh, the uh, we feel empty and we feel uh, finished and helpless and all of that. There is no need for that. Uh, yeah, we can stay completely in our power uh, with a smile on our face and enjoying the beauty of life, um, and just move on. Yeah. I yeah. mean, life does whatever life does to us. Yeah, it's not within our control anyway. So, uh, so, so here yeah. we are, right? You know, I think one of the beautiful and very practical applications. Um, I was thinking, you know, of people who are in school studying. Um, and the yes. higher the 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 schooling, the more the pressure. So, you know, uh, if. People are in medical school, in law school, in science, in physics, mathematics, or if they're just in nowadays, just in university. There's a lot of pressure that is being put on students from the outside. Yes. But if 
people were to realize, students among them, I just think of students because my son just finished law school and it was a real uh, ordeal because a lot of pressure is being put on the outside. And unfortunately, we're buying into this thing that we think that, oh, the more pressure we put on ourselves, the better we will perform. It's actually the opposite. Mm -hmm. If you sit back and notice, you realize that a lot of that pressure is actually unnecessary. Mm -hmm. uh, and that all you have to do is really, what? Use one of our steps, concentration. We have to focus. But in order to focus, instead of stressing, we have to relax hmm. and let go. So as we were speaking, the image came to my mind of when I was a little girl, the first time I, I discovered my shadow. It was so interesting because I actually thought it was another person following me uh, as right. a child, of course. And then yes. I, you know, I turned around, and when you turn around to look at your shadow, the shadow gets bigger. So you have a big person following you everywhere. How scary is that, right? Uh, especially if you're a little paranoid, it's really scary. What happens if you start to observe and play with that shadow? And you notice that if you turn, the shadow shrinks. And if you turn more, it completely disappears. It's kind of like what we're doing right now. If instead of going into the fear mode of, oh my God, there's somebody following me everywhere, and it's a very big, ugly, dark presence. Guess what? It isn't. It's just you. It's a shadow mm. that the light creates when you mm. move a certain way. Mm. How do you get rid of that fear? By observation. Right. You notice it isn't really a big dark person following you everywhere. It's actually your own shadow. Mm -hmm. And if you turn a certain way, it disappears. And if mm -hmm. you turn another way, it gets to be your own size or smaller. So instead of this huge, scary presence that follows you, it's of something very playful. You can play with it. Yes. So as a child, I discovered that I actually have a friend that shrinks yeah. in size or gets bigger, and I can play yes. with it. It's the same thing. That's a very, very sweet example, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All so, right, Regina. Yes. Yes. Um, have we missed anything? We wanted to make like a, a minger for, for dummies. Have we missed anything that you think is important to give you know, the, the people on the, on the way before we uh, you know, wrap things up here? I don't think we missed anything. I think that uh, if we think we did, we just have to relax and observe. <laughs> Very good idea. I think that's we. That's all we have to do, really. Well, thank you very much for uh, for putting the effort into you know thinking about how we can best explain you know how you can best explain the Mingzhu and. I think you did extremely well. Uh, it's it uh, makes total sense to me, and I hope that you know for everybody listening now that the next time the Minja State comes up, people will know what uh, we are talking about, and I also hope that many of them got inspired, you know, to practice Minja more for themselves and to use it in uh, in daily life. We trust you enjoyed this conversation, and we invite you to subscribe to our podcast so we can stay in touch and notify you of future episodes. We will end today's episode with the eight verses meditation performed by Chinin Qigong teacher Katrin Hendricks. Enjoy.
get your free ebook on the eight verses meditation please check the show notes below